I want to wait? It is week five. Week five, we are concentrating on unit 13. Unit 13 is helping us become more efficient and faster with that chord progression that you just did on last week's exam of one, four, six, four, one, five, six, five, one. So I encourage you to take a look at page 171 in your text and it gives you those chord progressions just like we had written out last time. I hope that you are thinking about memorizing them by movement of your hand versus trying to think through the pitches. So they've got a fun little exercise here to do on the bottom of 171, which is taking you through some different pitches going uh, through different keys and see if you can go move from the key of D into G and into A and just putting them in some different patterns. I hope that you're also putting them at the end of your scale passages. I hope that you're putting them into a chromatic pattern because you want to be fluent in all 12 keys because you know that is going to come on the proficiency. This week's quiz, quiz three, is concentrating on repertoire, and it is Moonlit Shores. And with Moonlit Shores, this is a good review of pedal. You should have uh, covered pedal and pedal technique in 106, but this is just a good chance for us to review it. So quiz three is the entire piece of Moonlit Shores with pedal. So that means that you need to make sure you record this on an instrument that has pedal. With Moonlit Shores, let's talk about how to break it down a little bit. We've talked about when you have a longer piece, it isn't always the smartest idea to start at the top and ramrod your way through to the end. Break it through into section. Just like we've talked about with sight reading, what can you break the measures down to? What's the big picture? And in particular, when working on a piece with pedal, that is the last thing that should go in. Pedal is not there to do your articulation for you. Pedal is there to enhance your articulation. So if you take a look at Moonlit Shores, first thing I wanna do before I play is come up with a strategy of how I wanna break it down. And I can see that as far as having a different section or a different middle section that's different in texture or key, that isn't happening so much. It looks like the exact same rhythmic pattern all the way through. So then let's look for another way to break it down. And I'm gonna look at how my left hand can break down into an interval of five, six, seven, six, five, six. So it's constantly moving up until I get here. So my first eight measures are all based around C position. Now I've got that same pattern of intervals going five, six, seven, but it's based off F. So then I would make that a separate section. Then look at your back to C, down to B flat, up to C, E flat. So as you're working through the transition here, remember that instead of giving yourself letter names, intervals, arrows up and down are gonna help you see where you're going takes you to a transition back to our A theme. Once you see what's happening with those left hand intervals, I would go through and block it as an interval so you feel how that interval is expanding. Then take a look at your right hand. You've got a little arched melody here going over a five finger pattern based in C. The next measure is based in D. See how I'm looking at the big picture and I'm looking at my hand movement. That's a faster way of learning than looking at each individual note and not looking at the relation to each other or any sequence or patterns that I have. Once I'm comfortable with seeing the big picture, then I would take it, my left hand still blocked, put the arch pattern in of the right hand be to articulate that interval in the left hand. I still am not using pedal. It's marked legato. My hand should be able to connect that. So when I put the pedal in, it's very, very smooth and syrupy. What tends to happen when people put the pedal down is then they assume that that is doing the connection and their hand starts doing this. I'm not connecting with my hand at all. That's 
that's a very different articulation than this is. So that's the reason that it's really important to learn it without pedal first. Once I'm through breaking down that C section, I'm gonna to go to my F section and same thing. Block the left hand, look at the right hand five finger pattern. How is it the same rhythm? How is it different? It's a mirror. So look at your patterns. When you go to the return section of the A, notice that when we get to the end, you've got both hands moving to treble clef. Your composer usually will give you an LH. They want your left hand to come up here. They also stem it down to show you this is not all the right hand to get that pattern and to get that legato. So the right hand at measure 25 is coming down to help out here. Once you have all those details in place, then it's time to add that pedal. So remember with the pedal, this is the sustain pedal, which is the one on the right. That heel needs to stay anchored on the floor. The toe or the ball of the foot is coming up. If your heel is coming off the ground like this, you're sitting too close and you've got too much of a 45 degree angle. You need to move, or excuse me, 90 degree angle. You need to move back and get a 45 degree angle. You should be back far enough so that you've got a slight lean forward in your back. That's going to put the weight down those long levers. It's going to get you that nice, rich tone. This piece is what's called an overlapping pedal because I've got a continuous up and right away back down. That means that you have to think about getting a smooth sound. If my foot and my hand come up and down at the same time, you're gonna get a hole on that bar line. So I'm lifting my hand and my foot at the same time. That's not an overlapping pedal. So an overlapping pedal means that your foot is going up as your hand is coming down. So my foot and my hand aren't doing this. They're doing this. Listen to the difference in the sound. Up, down. Up, down. So even though we don't really think of pedal on a beat, it's helpful to think of the pedal going up on one and down on the and. We'll work on that together in class. So that is quiz three due Friday by 5 p.m. I'm looking for even tempo, so use a metronome to check those eighth notes. I'm looking for dynamics. I'm looking for legato sound being achieved by the hands and then being enhanced with the pedal. We'll do a review on the other two pedals in class. I'd like you to know how they function just so that you've got a chance to maybe experiment with them and use them in some repertoire of your own. As you continue through unit 13, we will in class, and I encourage you on your own to use 174 and 175 for sight reading. Got another chance at some overlapping pedal here. These are continuing on the concept we had last week of being able to look at a piece and see that chord structure based on how the chord is spaced or how it looks. Knowing that reading this 1411141571 is a whole lot faster than thinking D, F sharp, A, D, G, B. I encourage you to transpose them as well. Remember, as we talked this week, start to encourage yourself to transpose up and down a third as will be required on the proficiency. There's a two-handed that I'd like you to try, Dono Nobis Pacham, similar to what we did with Streets of Laredo. If we have time, we'll do some ensemble work with that in class. And I also would like to hear on your class day your favorite of one of these harmonizations. This is not for a grade. This is similar to last week. You've got four melodies here that all can be easily harmonized with one, four, six, four, one, five, seven, one. Some of them they've told you in tablature, excuse me, up here. This one they've told you in Roman numeral. This one you've got free reign to make your own choice. So choose your favorite, but I want to hear how you're incorporating those chords, your choice of that left-hand pattern. So unit 13 here for week five. I look forward to hearing Moonlit Shores. Pay particular attention to your pedal work. Thanks. <laughs>